the Raza West One restaurant just off Oxford Street in the heart of London. In this program, we will be taking Das Sridharan, who owns Raza's, back to southern India, where he'll hope to cook curry that'll impress the locals. <laughs> Das first came to Britain from Kerala in southern India in 1990. He set up his first Rasa restaurant in North London in an effort to introduce us to vegetarian Kerala cuisine and to cure his homesickness. You know, the reason was when I came to this country, what I missed most was my home cooking, mum's food. I thought I wanted to recreate mum's food, the home cooking exactly as it, you know, is it in India. So when I looked at markets here, I found you can get everything here. All the ingredients, fresh and good quality, just like we have back home. So I decided I should create Kerala food, you know, offering a new revelation to people. The Indian food, many people thought it's just like chicken tikka masala, that's all people eat in India, which is not the story. Back in India, they don't eat any chicken tikka masala. It doesn't exist. Das's idea really took off, and now he has four restaurants around London. Das says the essence of his food is its simplicity. We went down to his kitchen to find out more. The sauce is made of yogurt with um, spices like uh, ginger, curry leaves, all these speciality spices from Kerala. To help me, I have got uh, Mr. Prasad, he's our head chef here. He's going to work with me. Mustard seeds is something in Kerala we use for all the dishes, but it's very um, uh, special spice because once it's really hot, it starts breaking. Once it starts popping, I, what normally I do is just put the fenugreek. I'm going to use some typical South Indian spices like curry leaves, ginger. What I do is just add finely chopped shallots. Unlike in North Indian cooking, you know, we don't cook our dishes too much, or spices or the vegetables. Other than onions, everything else we cook very little, so that you know you get the feel of the vegetables individually. But also, it's easy to distinguish spices. This curry is something really unusual here, but very traditional and normal in Southern India especially where we come from. People don't have a meal without this dish, but it is made in many ways. This is something that I learned from my mom and uh, something typical of the community we come from. So I'm putting in just a spoon of, teaspoon of uh, turmeric powder. Because they believe in simple cooking. So a lot of cooking is done with much simpler effort and very small number of ingredients. 10 to 15 minutes you can do a, a dish. Das then takes the pan off the heat before putting in yogurt to stop it from curdling. I'll keep stirring. The yogurt needs that attention. I'll put back it on fire. Then Das made a bread called apan to go with the curry. It's made from rice flour and the batter is then fermented. He cooked it in a chatty, a special cast iron pot, which produces a pancake-like bread shaped like a dish. So it was time to take Das to India for his takeaway challenge. How is he feeling about the trip ahead? Oh, it's a, it's a great feeling. It's like a dreaming to go home and taste mum's food and, you know, get some inspiration back here to England. Das returns to India regularly to get inspiration for his cooking and visit his family. Back home, I visit people. I go to different cooks from different communities. 
most probably you know, old people because they are the ones helped me so far to bring up the old traditions and old techniques of cooking. So I'd love to you know, meet up with some people and learn from them possibly. Das had arrived. His family live in a village about an hour's drive from the airport. His brother was there to meet him. I come from Kerala, which is uh, the southwest coast of India, a state which is um, on the coast on one side, on the hill on the other side, and we have in between an inland area where we have a lot of paddy fields full of coconut palms. Coconut is the heart of Kerala cooking and Kerala life, in fact, because it's full of coconut trees everywhere. Kerala is a remarkable place. It's fertile, relatively affluent, the majority of children attend free school, and it's said there is 100% literacy amongst its population, the highest rate in the world. Kerala has been a center of trade for centuries, and historically, it has always been prosperous. This has brought different cultures and religions to its shores, and could explain why the atmosphere here is so accepting and tolerant. Religions in Kerala exist in harmony alongside each other. Many communities are mixed, with churches standing next to mosques, which in turn stand next to Hindu temples. Cochin, the capital, is modern but also shows its colonial past with the influence of the Portuguese, British and Dutch seen here. Most recently, this region has become popular as a tourist destination. The combination of culture, beautiful beaches and a very relaxed atmosphere attract 200,000 tourists a year. Das has arrived at his family's village. His father's relations have lived here for generations. It's a small traditional community surrounding a Hindu temple with one main street. There is an often disconcerting mix of high tech, like mobile phones and the internet, with traditional Indian lifestyle here. Das's parents' home lies in the middle of paddy fields on the edge of the village. Everything you see around is green and see now the paddies almost ready to reap, and that's why it's turning golden. This used to be the place, you know, when, when we were kids, you know, wake up in the morning, come out and, you know, look at these beautiful paddy fields and the coconut palms. It is always my favorite place in the village. It's, it's always, you know, peaceful. You always hear the birds singing. It's a lot of good things around here. After our overnight journey, to the horror of the camera crew who hadn't had any sleep, Das was showing enormous stamina. After a brief hello to his parents, he was off with his brother Uni to visit a very special Brahmin family in the village. Join us after the break to see Das continue his takeaway challenge. in southern India. In the first half of Takeaway, we saw chef Das Sridharan, who has four restaurants in London, return to his home village. In this half, Das will visit a family here to see if he can learn anything about Kerala cuisine, and he'll face his own cooking challenge, when one of his dishes will be tested by the locals. Das's first inspiration came from his family's restaurant. My dad had a restaurant in our village. They started in 1935. So. His father started, then they, they continued the trade. And um, my initial training was with my dad, I mean, understanding the food business. So it all started in the village. Das and his brother have been invited into the home of a Brahmin family, which was a great honor. The Brahmins are the upper caste Hindus, who are the, the believers and the, the spiritual practitioners of Hinduism. Only a few times in my childhood and I have had the opportunity to taste a Brahmin f a meal. I'm very much excited because I think uh, this is an occasion I was looking forward to going into this kind of special old house with lots of things I have only heard of and learned from this guy who had started his cooking maybe 40 years ago. The Krishnan brothers are both Brahmin priests in the local temple. 
They live together in this house with their families. They often cook for religious functions and use mostly traditional methods. We're going to have two different dishes today. One is a mixed vegetable uh, dish called abio, which we make in London as well. And um, a stir-fried dish made of cabbage. First of all, the preparation for the mixed vegetable dish, which includes pumpkin, yam, carrot, beans and two local vegetables, snake gourd and drumsticks. He's saying this dish, um, you have all vegetables cut in the same length, especially for this curry, because vegetables need to be seen. It's a very popular Kerala vegetable dish. We make it every day at home. We also do it uh, you know, when we have functions. Now time to prepare a cabbage dish. It's fantastic the way he chop it, isn't it? No, I wish I knew this. It's, it's so easy. Quite fast as well, isn't it? But these guys are you know, excellent you know, chefs. You know, they cook for big functions. I was asking if they cook at home. They say very rarely. But our wives cook at home. Indoors, time to cook. The kitchen was traditional with a wood fire. And you see the smoke. You don't find it even in Kerala now. Unless it's a very traditional old house. You know, where they're still with old traditions. For the vegetable curry, the washed vegetables are steamed in their own water on the fire. Then turmeric and chilli powder are added. Such an important vegetable dish and it's done with two spices. So that is the you know, beauty of Kerala cooking. You don't need too many things. And a banana leaf is used as a saucepan lid. The cabbage dish is equally simple. Lentils, mustard seeds, curry leaves and chilies are fried in coconut oil. Then the cabbage is added. The finishing touch for the vegetable curry. Now we're adding the, you know, the coconut mixture, which is coconut ground with ginger and cumin seeds. Time for tasting. The cabbage, first of all, served on banana leaves on the floor. The taste is really nice. But the coconut flavor is really nice. And uh, green chilies. And the taste of coconut oil really comes through. Then the vegetable curry, which Das found a bit hot. Just saying, you know, the, the dish, uh, Abiyo, slightly spicy for me. But um, they're saying, you know, it's, it's not hot. So it depends, you know. So thank you very much. What I have learned is that, you know, the humility of uh, this household, how much, uh, you know, that hospitality element they had in within them, which I think, I think maybe because of the religious, well, you know, restriction, they couldn't really mingle with outside public. That's one thing. Secondly, their style of cooking is simpler, uncomplicated, and it's cleaner. And like, you know, he just taught me how to, you have to wash every vegetable. Also, he taught me, you know, all the vegetables should be, you know, cooked together. Back at Das's home, we were shown around the garden. What people grow in their vegetable patch has more influence on cooking here than anything else. In addition to the paddy fields and all that, you know, we grow a lot of spices and vegetables in our own garden. So it makes us a self-sufficient local people. In addition to ginger, turmeric, bananas, nutmeg and peppercorns, Das's family also have coconuts in plentiful supply. Coconut is an essential Kerelan ingredient and features in many dishes. Also, something that looks like a bedding plant but adds a delicious flavour to any dish. Ah, oh, beautiful. There's a curry leaf plant. The most central ingredient of any Kerala cooking. Without curry leaves, nothing works. Das's family live very traditionally. His brother and wife live in his parents' home and running a household is seen as a woman's job. Das's first training came in his mother's kitchen when he was a boy. It's a full-time job preparing all your food fresh every day and cooking three curries for most meals. Mrs. Sridharan gets up at 4.30 every morning. She goes to the temple, milk her, her own cow, prepare the breakfast. The cooking starts from there and it goes on all day until about 8 o'clock then she lie down tired 
But my dad thought, you know, she, she deserves and she needs help. So he taught us, as when we were kids, that, you know, we should all be helping her. So we went together and uh, started to do this chopping and cutting. And so that's how it all began, the, the interest. Having spent a day in the village, it was time for Das to head for Cochin an hour away to do some cooking himself. First stop, the vegetable market. Most Hindu Kerelan dishes are vegetarian, so the freshness of vegetables is very important here. We had selected the Hotel Romex, an everyday Cochin restaurant, as the venue for Das's challenge. Did he feel confident? Oh my God, that's a tough one. I don't know, I'm really worried, but, um, well, challenged, you know. But I think it's very, very interesting, and this is something that I haven't done. It's really, really special to cook for somebody who cooks every day, their hand with the fresh ingredients, and they know best. This guy I'm going to cook with has been here for ages. So to get his opinion of my cooking, it's a tough one. To add to the pressure, the restaurant could only allow us 15 minutes in their kitchen. Das coped remarkably well. It's lunchtime here, so it's really crowded and they're gonna get really busy, so I'm asking the chef's help, so he can finish it off fast. Not too organized, <laughs> but that's the fun of it, maybe. So we have all our ingredients ready here. Yeah. In order. Curry leaves, garlic, ginger, chilies, shallots, tomatoes. Some cut very fine, some just quarter tomatoes. And the final bit, we've got some fresh coriander. Ah. Ah. Got some nice fresh yogurt. And in spice powders, we got um, <coughs> turmeric, chili powder, and coriander powder. You're ready to cook. So what we can do is we're going to add the first thing, which is put some, some coconut oil. That is different compared to what you do in London. You don't use coconut oil. We don't get and we don't use. But here, you know, it's, it's a common thing and it gives a very nice flavor to the dish. In go the mustard seeds followed by the garlic and shallots. And then the chilies and ginger are added, followed by the ground spices. And I like fresh coriander powder. It's a bit more of coriander because it makes the dish a bit more colorful and coriander taste is quite uh, they don't use coriander all the time here. So now I'm just going to add, you know, the tomato is finely cut. I'm just asking him how does he feel, you know, to see cooking like this. How different is it from his normal style? He says it's quite different. But firstly, you know, they're not used to making like small dishes like this. And also the way I add spices step by step. So it's almost ready now. See, you know, the small uh, tomato which I cut, which they have already cooked. Nice and cooked, and the big chunks, you know, they stay as it is, and the skin is really good. But the freshness still remains inside. You can feel that. It's not overcooked. That looks beautiful to me. As you see here, the color looks fantastic, isn't it? That's what is really inviting about the dish. 
chicken. You can see the chilies, red, green. You can see the curry leaves, ginger, whatnot. Everything, you know, you can see it. I want to scare them by showing the chilies. Hope they won't. If I do this in London, people get scared of seeing all the chilies. But these guys, they will love it. Chilies. So it was time for the staff to taste it. Hey, oh, the dish is ready. I will ask the chef for the verdict. I'm just going to ask them to taste it for me. The tasty is the paratha. He says it's really nice. Fantastic, isn't it? I'll ask the chef now, the main man. He says it's good as well. So, how many marks out of 10? It's the 8 out of 10. That's not bad, isn't it? Coming to this country of origin and you know, cook something for them, give it 8 out of 10. At the end of the day, did Das feel his food had passed the takeaway challenge? But that was the most uh, challenging part because I never knew that you know, how this is going to turn out, you know, how these guys are going to receive me or, you know, how they're going to cooperate. And always somebody come from a different area and, you know, show something they practice every day. But I'm quite uh, excited that, you know, they said they really love the food. It's very authentic, you know, what uh, the slightest difference may be that, you know, I try to make it look beautiful which is that uh, visual element of the food is not followed very much here. So every time I go back, I always take something back to England. I think this time it's a new experience. Everything that I have done, you know, the cooking with those people, going in that restaurant, cooking in front of lots of ordinary professional cooks. I think that was great. Mm -hmm.